Mary Lou Bigelow, and welcome again to my Afghanistan series. Today we're going to talk about helping rebuild the intellectual society of Afghanistan through books. We have Najim Azadzoi, who is with Azad Architects. He has been back and forth to Afghanistan this year, helping the current uh, government there on reconstruction and planning. Uh, in fact, he was the uh, co-sponsor of a reconstruction conference in Kabul from September 21st through the 24th, and uh, brought uh, some books that we'll talk about in a little while once we get the show going. Then uh, next to Najim, we have uh, Tanya Vidvitsky, who is the executive director of Sabre Foundation. She has been involved since 1990, and uh, since 1991, she's been project, she was project director developing book and journal donation programs throughout the former Soviet Union, the Balkans, and Mo Mongolia. Currently, she oversees the expansion of programs to Cuba and Africa. She initiated also Sabre's internet projects including electronic publishing and information technology workshops, which is a, a customized training program for professionals from developing or transitional countries. Uh, we have Charles Getchell, who is uh, an attorney and consultant to Sabre. He's been a consultant since 1990. Uh, he serves as secretary as well as chairman of Sabre Europe Association International based in Brussels, Belgium. I know you run the day-to-day -day, uh, office. Uh, in fact, I was uh, in Afghanistan when I saw uh, some books that uh, Sabre Foundation had given uh, to the University of Kabul. Tell me a little bit about how you chose Afghanistan, you and your board? Well, we've always been interested in working in the most neediest places, uh, countries that have undergone one kind of upheaval or another. And so certainly trying to help in Afghanistan fits our mission and, and, um, and our goals. And um, it really started uh, our thinking uh, about Afghanistan started in the summer of 2001. The Afghan refugee camps in Pakistan and uh, went into, um, um, I think, northern Afghanistan at that point. And uh, um, post-September 11th, we then started seriously thinking about how to what kind of projects that, we, that would be feasible. Uh, Charles, tell us a little bit about why books, uh, you feel books are so important to Afghanistan. Well, uh, as you know, uh, Afghanistan has a long tradition of achievement in scholarship, in literature, in science, and uh, a very literate population before things were put off the track uh, two decades ago, first by the Soviet invasion then by the Civil War. So the task is to, is to help restore uh, what was there before. Right, and uh, so Tanya, you, you decided anyway that uh, you are going to give, what is it, something like 8,000 books to yes. Afghanistan? Yes, well our, our shipments uh, normally are fairly large shipments, large number of, of uh, uh, copies, large number of titles and multiple copies per title and we work with non-governmental organizations that choose the titles, they actually select the books that they want and only those books are then sent. But before we sent our large container to, um, to Afghanistan, we also work with Najim to get very carefully selected books on architecture, construction and engineering. Right, and, and then uh, you entrusted him with about 40 books to take to the uh, engineering faculty at the University mm -hmm. of uh, Kabul. 
and um, that was quite a wonderful day. I happened to be there that day and uh, filmed it. You'll see some footage from there on this show. Um, now, Jean, tell us a little bit about what it felt like going back home to the school where you taught. You were an assistant professor at one time. I know you graduated. You got your master's, actually, at MIT. Yes. But uh, you did teach there for a while, and you had gone to that school. How did you feel returning and being able to bring these books to uh, Dean Zia? Well, Mary Lou, first of all, on behalf of the Afghan community in Massachusetts, and also on behalf of Kabul University, I would like to thank you for this show, and I would like to express our thanks to Sabre Foundation uh, for s helping Afghan, Afghanistan universities, schools, and libraries was sending books. Uh, yes, it is true that uh, for me, uh, when I f took a first trip this year, last July, and I went to Kabul University, uh, and I met with the Chancellor of Kabul University, and I visited the Kabul uh, University Library and the School of Engineering where I graduated, I basically found no books uh, in the library or in the schools for the students to study. Uh, Faculty of Engineering or College of Engineering, which had or had still has four disciplines, civil engineering, electrical engineering, mechanical engineering, and architecture, uh, were taught in English language, and we had English uh, books. Uh, but there was no books there. Mm. So we sat down and talked with the chancellor, and the chancellor of Kabul University asked for help. And at that time, because I had met with uh, Tanya and Charles in a first gathering uh, in their uh, meeting to decide to send book books out, so I, I sent the message that Sabre Foundation is planning to help uh, in Kabul University. Um, Dr. Akbar Popal, who is the chancellor of Kabul University, sent a letter to Sabre Foundation, and I brought that letter back uh, in, in, in August and I presented to Sabre Foundation. I had an opportunity to go back there in, in September for a conference, and at that time Sabre Foundation informed me, me that they have decided or they have already sent a shipment to Afghanistan, about eight to 9,000 books. But also as a gift, they, uh, they, they gave me, handed me uh, two boxes of selected books, architecture, engineering, civil engineering, and these are all selected books uh, published uh, 2002, 2001, or the uh, oldest one was 1998 or 97, uh, from all different disciplines, textbooks, references, valuable books. And uh, I took those books to Kabul University, and at this time, after two months, uh, I informed the university that I have brought the books. Uh, they, they organized a special occasion for receiving those books. And uh, there uh, I personally presented the right. books one, to, one by one to. It was, it, that was the, the exciting thing, to see you uh, present the books and you called them out in, with their English names. Uh, one by one, with these beautiful covers, etc., and the expression on Dean Zia's face and some of the others when they looked at these wonderful books. I remember one specifically uh, that had to do with statistics. It wouldn't make me smile particularly, but he yeah. grabbed uh -huh. it and he opened it up and he started looking through. So, um, you know, you could, without words, you knew how much this meant Thanks. to them. Uh, and it was quite exciting. Well, and there were some other people there, too. Present at that uh, gathering was the head of all t the departments, including the civil engineering head of department, electrical engineering, and the head of the architecture department. Uh, they were present. In addition to that, there were uh, faculty members and also members of the Socie uh, Society of Afghan Engineers who traveled with us uh, in that uh, conference. Uh, in addition to that, and the president of the Society of Afghan Engineers, 
uh, there were uh, few guests uh, or visitors from Europe. Uh, a woman, uh, Zara Breshno, she's an architect. Uh, she was also present there. And uh, a former professor, a woman professor, Dr. Uh, Yunus, uh, she returned back to the country and to that same department after 23 years. Uh, she was present there, and it was uh, accidentally we all met together. It and was that wonderful. Gathering. She was so overcome by emotion, actually, exactly. to be back there. And she was the first woman teacher at the Faculty of Engineering. Um, but uh, also, uh, talk a little bit about, um, uh, well, what did uh, uh, Dean Zia say to you after we went through all the books? Well, uh, let me mention, uh, Dean Zia uh, was a professor when I was a student over there. Uh, he has uh, finished his bachelor degree from one of the universities in the United States that I cannot remember. He finished his master's degree in the United States, and he got his PhD from the United States. He has a doctorate degree. But when he returned um, back to Afghanistan, and then in the 1980s, all the trouble began, he never wanted to leave the country for one reason or the other. And at this time when we uh, met him, he had a little bit grown gray <laughs> beard. Yeah. And I joked with him that this is uh, something new, and he right. said yes. Uh, uh, he, he never thought that he was going to touch uh, a new book uh, in his life again, because uh -huh. uh, it was lost to him 20 years. Uh, he had never had a chance to see a new book. All the books that they had were either uh, 1960s or 70s. Uh, right. It was not even left that right. much. And much even of it. after um, after that little ceremony that you had, uh, we went into the library, and we could see the shelves. They were nearly empty. It was just so few books. I didn't look at them closely, but. Everyone was aghast when they saw the shelves, you know, mm -hmm. of those books. Yeah. So then you understood how much this meant to those people. To them, yes. Uh, especially the, the College of Engineering at Kabul University, the F College of Agriculture, the Medical College, uh, so, uh, in a few other professional uh, degree, science uh, degree uh, colleges, they do rely on English books. Uh, they do read English book because we don't have it in our language. And that was a question that I had. They do study in English, in English. actually. Uh, so all of the books were in English. They were all in English. That's right. And do you find, Tanya, just, just uh, mm -hmm. talk a little bit about this experience that you're hearing some of this for the first time from Najim since he's been back. Is this true all over the world, would you say? Most of the books that you send, are they in English? Yes, most of the books that we send are in English um, because people are actually learning English all over the world. It's true. truly the international the language. And professional language. Due to the commercial um, aspects, the Internet has had a huge role to play in that. Uh, so it's not uh, that we're imposing the English books on, on our clients, if you will but that they're requesting English language books. So that's one way they can join, in effect, the world community, world uh, business. Uh, um, so we, we, there's right. an ever-increasing re uh, request, in fact, for English language materials. Right, and Charles, do you find the same thing, that actually uh, the English books are the, uh, the greatest in demand? We do. Uh, Tony and I had a specific uh, experience a couple of years ago. We were <coughs> asked to study uh, a program for Algeria, and we went to France and Belgium prospecting for donations from French and Belgian publishers and expecting that would be what would be wanted in Algeria. And we were very surprised to learn that they were really looking for the latest texts which in their fields which were often in English. And Naishin, going back, tell everyone about the um, the wonderful dinner you had or luncheon you had with for about 70 people all in one room. I think it was like 10 tables all in a row, all mm -hmm. lined up. I, I've never seen anything like that before. Well, uh, tell them about what, that. what happened uh, before going to Kabul University to, to give the books that Sabre Foundation gave it uh, to them, uh, we stopped by a high school, and uh, there we, we 
distribute some cash money that a ninth grade student from New Jersey oh, right. sent to that. Of course. Uh, and then among us was with all of these Afghans uh, expatriates and everybody wanted to do something among us was Ashraf Roshan and he said well I will prepare lunch for for everyone so he donated he donated this is a society of engineers society of Afghan engineers oh. and I, I think uh, the total cost was about hundred dollar and uh, it, it it was a wonderful uh, it was kebab, kebab and, and a milk uh, and tea and tea, cookies, cookies and cake and, and candies and uh, not only the, the faculty staff in Dean Zio joined us uh, the students of all departments and also some of the people who work uh, uh, who worked around the campus like the gardeners and, and uh, a group of uh, uh, women engineer women who yes. um, I talked to uh, and uh, there are quite a few uh, women it, engineers. They're very, very proud of their uh, yes, the we, fact that they are Yes, we found uh, in a class of 25 students, six of them were women oh. to study architecture. And uh, uh, I don't want to make the story long. One of them I asked, uh, and she said that this is her ninth year in the university. Nine. And I said, how come you haven't graduated in ninth year? This yes. is a five-year school. Yes. And she said that in the last five years of Taliban, she couldn't come to school, and now she's beginning oh, to uh, right. study. Uh, she was so happy to see the books, and oh. she, they wanted so much more. As a matter of fact, uh, it was uh, discussions between the four departments, whether they should keep each book or the dean of the school would like to keep them all in one reference. Yes. It was a big issue ha where to keep the 40 books and how it should be used. Ownership. And, I, and I'm mm -hmm. sure that it will be used uh, to the most. Uh, it yes. will be used to the most. Oh, yes. Well, it was quite an experience just to, you know, you just don't think, books, big deal, books. We go to a library here or we go to a, a, one of these huge super stores without mentioning a name particularly, or we get on the Internet and it seems so simple. Books are everywhere. But over there you realized uh, and you were taken uh, uh, back quite emotionally, I, I felt. Uh, uh, I, when you I, I, I was those. very, uh, uh, yeah, it, it, it affected me a lot. Kabul University was one of the achievements of 1960s and 70s. It was uh, an American? It was American state. Indiana uh, University ah. who uh, became associated with Kabul University in 1967. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, the, f the building that we went and that building was built by the aid of uh, United States, mm. USAID. Not only that building, the, the, the university dormitory, which uh, houses about three uh, to 4,000 mm. students, the uh, faculty of agriculture, um, uh, law, literature, all these buildings were built in the 1960s with the help of United States. Mm. And it is time to repair them. They are in good shape. Right. They are physically existed there. Right. We uh, noticed they need, they they need paint, they uh, certainly, and uh, some repair. Um, I guess the heating is all right. There, the heating right? was not working, no. Oh, it wasn't? We, we mm. asked them. The heating system was not working. The electricity was not working. If you notice, we passed by a very dark corridor. And the electrical uh, head oh. of the electrical department, mm. uh, he said that he was able to pull out a wire and put one bulb in the middle oh of a no. 200 long feet uh, dark corridor. Just give a little bit of light to find out which door you should go. Well, maybe we'll find a donor to help them uh, w it's with... Uh, it is badly needed. Yes. And it is... So they can we always uh, contact you, Najim Azadzoi, at as at Architects in Newton. Uh, and uh, uh, and through Sabre Foundation, Foundation at Sabre.org, mm -hmm. right? Yes. We should mention that a few times. They're in Cambridge, Massachusetts, and uh, S-A-B-R-E, so that's uh, simple enough. Um, and uh, so now let's talk about when you went to the main library yes. of the university. Mm -hmm. How did you find that? Were those books, I mean, those shelves a little better? or? In July, when we went there, we found empty shelves, everything. everything. It is a very fine, well-designed library. 
It was designed in the 1960s, but it, 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 it functions very well. It has a huge area of storage for, for, for shelvings. It has a catalog area, it has a reference area, it has a study area. And the second floor you go, there is a, uh, the, the, the reference again in the magazines. Uh, but this time, when, uh, it, it is within walking distance. All the buildings at the Cobb University are within walking distance. It's a pretty campus, it by the way. It is a pretty campus. It was As green, and there were some beautiful, beautiful. red flowers, too, and, uh, uh, which was yes, and, and, quite and rare. We, first of all, we, when we, before we entered the library, we, we found that there were people working on the landscaping, and I have pictures of those, uh, that they were repairing the, fl mm. they were putting flowers in the, then we went inside. Uh, now, at that time when we went, the school was uh, closed for summer vacation. Uh, but at this time, we, we, we took the message to the uh, librarian. Uh, we met with him, and we told him, told him the Saber Foundation has sent the books, and it should uh, arrive soon. Uh, they were very happy to, to hear the news. And then from there, we walked to the chancellor's office. And uh, we also took the message to the chancellor that the books are coming, and he was very happy. And Tanya, tell me, uh, excuse me for interrupting, sure. but Tanya, have they arrived? Yes, they have. Oh, um, good. We sent the books in late August, um, and it took a little longer than, than expected because there were some holdups, but not in Afghanistan. The holdups were in Russia. Uh, we, uh, our partners uh, right now in Afghanistan, and we'll, we'll have other partners as well, but have um, been our long-term partners in Uzbekistan since 1994, in fact. And they opened um, a satellite office in Mazar Sharif. And so we sent the, the container at the end of August. It arrived finally in Tashkent at the end of October, and the books have been, we just heard last week, they have been distributed um, and uh, not only in the area of Mazar Sharif, but also in Kabul. Mm -hmm. All right. So, so there's, so far, there's a, some in Mazar Sharif and some in Kabul. What about in Herat? Uh, we're waiting for a um, distribution report, but that'll... And Kandahar, we, right? We don't know yet. Yes. Uh, I mean, right. it's... Uh, it's tricky communicating, right, um, I know. although <laughs> email really makes a huge difference. Mm -hmm. We couldn't do this really without Absolutely. being able to Absolutely. Thank have goodness for, right. for the internet right. and email. Right. Yes. Um, now, um, but Charles, how do you feel about this? I mean, really, you've been so involved in this, uh, this uh, Afghanistan uh, proposal since the beginning. And uh, so, what can you add to this? How do you, I know you'd love to have been over there to be at that meeting. I would have, yeah. Yeah. Let me uh, mention how we funded this first shipment. The first shipment of over 8,000 books was funded by a generous grant from the American Association of University Presses. They raised about $19,000 for us at a silent Wonder. auction of advertising space at their annual meeting. Since then and since our brainstorming about uh, what the needs are and how to fill those needs. We have uh, <clears throat> cast our net for larger funding, including a proposal to the State Department, which is, has supported our work for many years, for a special grant for a two-year program in Afghanistan. We're hopeful that that may bear fruit. And we're also reaching out to the uh, other people who are interested in one project or another in Afghanistan. You find people particularly interested in public health, in uh, education of women, and of course the, the people who really need help are all the young people whose schooling has been harmed uh, for the past two decades by this interruption by, by conflict. That's right. <laughs> well, um, now Shane, what what would you like to say? We're coming to a fast close, I'm afraid. And uh, what what else can you say about this program? Uh, I, I it's like meant a lot to you, I know. Yes, I would like to say that the, the reconstruction of Afghanistan is a big big task. But to do it correct and to do it the right way, uh, we have to build the, the foundation of the society, which is basically education. With a good education. Uh, uh, healthy education, we will uh, 
produce a society over there that will overcome all the difficulties, including this uh, struggle against terrorism and cleaning up the, the, the region from the dark uh, period of the past. Well, I want to thank you. Time flies when you're having fun. And uh, you just said it. It's helping rebuild the intellectual society of Afghanistan. And I want to thank all of you for being here. Let's do it again and continue your wonderful work, both of you, Tanya and uh, Charles. And thank you, Najin. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.